thanks for coming to this roundtable. It, it's, it's very interesting to be discussing targeting the MAPK uh, pathway, lessons learned, challenges, and opportunities. So th this pathway has been uh, um, studied um, extensively from uh, uh, small organisms like Drosophila and C. elegans up to uh, humans. And, um, and what we have learned has turned into drugs that have uh, made it to patients and uh, with remarkable successes. So we are here to discuss um, you know, what was discovered, what was the difficulties that were faced, and uh, how to move forward. So the MAP-K signaling pathway, Dr. Barbasid, has been extensively studied. Can you briefly summarize what were the key discoveries and how you think this could be applied to the therapy of patients? Well, um, the key discoveries uh, were first uh, to identify the mutations in this pathway in about a third of human cancer and particularly in some of the most uh, malignant tumors, you know, lung adenocarcinoma, pancreatic uh, ductal adenocarcinoma. The problem, as has been said, is that the RAS are not druggable. They are not there are no strategies that can effectively deactivate RAS, okay? So we need to look <laughs> downstream, but what we are learning now is that the complexities of the MAP kinase pathway are tremendous. I mean, it's not a linear pathway. There are a lot of interactions between these proteins among the members of the RAF family, among the members of the MEC family, feedback loops, that control the pathway. So I think we still need to do much more research before we can really come up with a clean strategy to block the MAP, MAP, MAP kinase pathway effectively in the clinic. So maybe we can go ahead and start uh, from you. And um, um, it'd be great to know more about the current status of the MAP pa pathway in the clinic and um, uh, across different tumor types. The question is whether there are auctionable um mechanisms in the, uh, in the clinic involving the RAS MAP kinase pathway. And uh, actually in, in at least three tumor types, I think there are different drugs available that actually uh, affect the prognosis and our clinical outcome upon uh, treatment of patients, notably with melanoma, to some extent with uh, colorectal cancer, and to some extent with lung cancer, where we actually identified mutations where we have drugs available, and we also know that uh, when we treat these patients that they, uh, the natural course of disease is, uh, is notably altered. The downside of it is, it is that, at least for lung cancer, where I'm, uh, uh, which is my field of uh, uh, interest, we do not cure patients with those pathways activated with the currently available drugs, so a lot needs to be done still. So, uh, it is, fair, is it fair to say that uh, you know, RAS is a central molecule in controlling the pathway, and yet um, you know, clinically and, and also from an industry perspective, it's very difficult to tackle this, this protein so when mutated, yeah? RAS itself, you know, it's, at least with the current state of affairs, is that RAS itself is untargetable. And so we need to target the uh, uh, downstream effectors of uh, RAS. And again, to some extent, we have been successful. But I, I think that for the larger part, it's fair to say that we have been unsuccessful to target uh, effectively uh, uh, this pathway in the clinic. Maybe we can uh, follow up on, on this very, very important topic with, with a perspective from, uh, from the industry. So what was the difficulties, I'm assuming, um, you know, toxicity, but also the difficulties in targeting the, the proteins themselves? From an industry point of view, it's been really challenging to target the pathways. So as we heard today from uh, the conference, that RAS, which is activated through mutation, uh, is one of the driving factors of several cancers. So the industry has tried to target RAS, uh, but unfortunately there was no successful way to target RAS. Later on, the industry decided to go downstairs, you know, downstream of the target pathway, and we targeted a BRF and MEC. Um, so we did make headways with the BRF inhibitors, uh, and we did also successfully target MEC. Unfortunately, the issue with 
targeting RAF is the emergence of resistance, um, uh, as well as MEC, right? Or in the combination of the RAF inhibitor as well as MEC inhibitor. So what we are thinking of now is to go downstream of MEC, which is ERK. Um, and the industry just recently came up with some inhibitors that preclinically work well. Um, and we are waiting for them to move forward into the clinic. So they could be used either as a single agent uh, or in combination. So Dr. Barbasi, what have we learned about the essentiality, the fact that this pathway appears to be essential for, for life from, um, from um, experimental models? Well, that adds another complication to try to block this pathway, and that is that we cannot affect normal homeostasis. I mean, we have to target the pathway somehow in a way that only specifically target the tumor cells, but not the normal cells. Otherwise, we are going to be reinventing cytotoxics. Thank you. I think this is a key message.